hear what the Spirit has to say. Listen to what the Spirit has to say to you. And Father, I thank you it will get inside of us. And the whole earth was of one language and of one accent and mode of expression. And as they journeyed eastward, they found a plain valley in the land of Shinar, Shinar, and they settled and dwelt there. And they said one to another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. So they had brick for stone and slime for mortar. And they said... Remember, before they, the, it says that they were of one language, one mind, one heart, one voice. Glory to God. Hear what the Spirit has to say. <clears throat> and they said, uh, in verse 4, And they said, Come, let us build us a city and a tower whose top reaches into the sky, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered over the whole earth. Okay? Think about it. I, I hear what the Spirit's saying to you today, saying to us today. These are people who are not born-again people. These are people who are just... Their spirits are dark. They, don't, they wouldn't necessarily even have an understanding. And they may not have had a, a total understanding of this. But their voices were all the same. And I, as I did some studying on this, uh, and I don't want to get technical, but in the Hebrew, it said that the lip of one... And as I was talking to Kidder yesterday, um, he said, well, it sounds to me... Because it was man. It was the, the, the word that was used just meant a man. One man. And I thought, well, you know, they're all together one. He said, but think about it. Nimrod, and we know from history, was actually the king or whatever you want to call him, tyrant of the people at this point. And at, he, he built Nineveh, he built Babylon. He was high and lifted up, <laughs> full of himself. And I want to put out to you... And, and there is a point to all this. I want to point out to you that the one lip, it came from him. Let's build a city. Let's build this tower that will rise up. And when he said that, they got a hold of it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you. And they all began then to speak the same thing. Now listen to what happens in verse 6. And I love this. Or, I'm sorry, verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now nothing... <clears throat> Hear what the Spirit is saying to you. And now nothing they have imagined they can... Uh, wait a minute. And now nothing they have imagined they can do will be... It will not be impossible for them. Are you hearing that? And these are people who are not born again people, who are not filled with the power of God who have not been raised up into that heavenly place and seated next to Christ, <laughs> hear what the Spirit has to say. Glory to God. One mind, one heart, one voice, and nothing that they can think of, nothing that they can imagine will be impossible for them. Glory to God. Let's turn to Chronicles, Second Chronicles, sorry. Let's see, that's here somewhere. <laughs> there we go. And uh, the fifth chapter. 
I want, uh, one thing I want you to catch is that when we're in one mind, in one accord, when, when man gets in one mind, one heart, one voice, God moves. God moves. In Genesis, <laughs> He's like, uh-oh, we got to do something. And I'm sorry, I should have read on. Basically what happens is he, just, he, he changes all their languages. They're not speaking the same thing anymore. And the tower that was built, we all know, or I, I would assume everybody knows, is what is called the Tower of Babel. And it's because at that place is where the languages were all jumbled up. Nobody understood anybody. Glory to God. Ooh, okay, uh, Chronicles, the fifth chapter. Second Chronicles, I'm sorry. The fifth chapter. And this, just as a, to give you a little uh, background, is when the, this is the dedication of the temple. This is when Solomon had built the temple according to the directions that had been given to his father David. And um, th this is, that day has come. It's finally finished. That day has come, and they are, they are dedicating this temple. And, and we're going to start with verse uh, 11. And when the priest had come out of the holy place, for all the priests present had sanctified themselves, separating themselves from everything that defiles without regard to their divisions. Did you hear that? Without regard to their divisions, there were different ones, and they all had different things that they did. <laughs> and all the Levites who were singers, all of those of Asaph, Haman, and Jedithan, and their sons and kinsmen, arrayed in fine linen, having cymbals, harps, and lyres, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them 120 priests blowing trumpets. And when the trumpeters and the singers were joined in unison, listen, making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the other instruments for uh, song and praise the Lord, saying, this is the interpretation of what they were saying. The Holy Spirit was there uh, for He is good, for His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Then the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud. The thing I want you to get is they made one sound. There were all of these different instruments, all of these different people that were singing, but they made one sound unto God and it was praise unto God. Hear what the Spirit's saying to you today, people. Glory to God. And they were in one accord. And what does it say? And the glory of the Lord, the cloud filled the temple, verse 14, so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Glory to God. And I, I want, and I know we all want in this house, in this place, we want God's presence. Glory to God. And we have the man that sits over here that has the vision, and he's going to give us the vision. He gives us the vision all the time, and we need to begin to speak it. We need to begin to get ourselves in line and get in one accord, one heart, one voice, one mind. Glory to God. Okay, let's go to Acts, the first chapter, please. And we will start with verse 14. And I'm going to kind of skip just a little bit, but we'll, I'll tell you when. Verse 14, all of these with their minds in full agreement devoted themselves steadfastly to prayer, waiting together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Did you hear that? They were all together. With one mind, they were in agreement. 
the thing that they were waiting for is what Jesus had told them. So he's the, there's the voice, there's the vision. They didn't know exactly what it was going to be. But he said, go to Jerusalem and wait there until the Holy Spirit comes. And I'll tell you what, they, the whole, they didn't know what the Holy Spirit was, had never heard of other than him speaking about him. But he didn't say, okay, this is what it's going to be. They just went and waited. They got the voice of the one, and then they went in agreement, and they waited. Okay? And what, agree what happens in agreement? God moves. In chapter 2, starting with the first verse, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place, in agreement, one mind, one heart, one voice, when suddenly there came a sound from heaven like the rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were separated and distributed, and which settled on each one of them, and we all know what happened. They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, and they were speaking in the languages of all the people that were in Jerusalem at the time. It's because they were in one mind, one accord, one heart, with one voice in the beginning, and God moved. Oh, hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus, Father, that we get in one accord, that we get the dividing walls broken down, Lord. Glory to you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Turn to Acts, the fourth chapter, just a couple of pages over. Verse 23, And after they were permitted to go, the apostles returned to their own company and told all of the, all that the, what the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they heard it, lifted their voices together with one united mind to God and said, O sovereign Lord, you are he who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything that is in them. Verse 25, who by the mouth of our forefather David, your servant and child, said through the Holy Spirit, why did the heathen become a wanton and insolent and rage? And the people imagine, we'll kind of skip some of this. Hold on just a second. Verse 29, remember they're still all in one, one, court, one mind, one accord. And I imagine that they were lifting up the prayer and they were speaking in tongues. Some of them may have been speaking in English, but the Holy Spirit's there. And this is the interpretation of what they were speaking. Glory to God. And now, Lord... Observe their threats and grant to your bondservants full freedom to declare your message fearlessly while you stretch out your hand to cure and to perform signs and wonders through the authority and by the power of the name of your holy child and servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, remember, they were in one mind, one accord, speaking the same thing. And when they had, a, and when they had play, prayed, the place in which they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they continued to speak the word of God with freedom and boldness and courage. Now the company of believers was of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything which he possessed was exclusively his own, but everything uh, they had was in common and for the use of all. And with great strength and ability and power, the apostles delivered their testimony. Glory to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you today, people. Get a hold of it. Get a hold of it. Glory to God. Bless you, Jesus. And Pastor uh, actually spoke about this this morning. I want you to go ahead and turn to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Oh, people, we have no, we haven't gotten a grasp yet, I don't think, of the power of unity of the power of one mind, one heart, one voice. Glory to God. I'm sorry, uh, Matthew 18. 
these were at least 120, 120 men and women that were in that upper room. And because of the unity they had, the God moved and this whole world was changed forever. Right. Changed forever. Never the same again. As much as the devil tried, it's never going to be the same again. It's never the same again. Glory to God. And we have a community that is out there that we need to touch. And I'll tell you what, they will never be the same again. Glory to you, Jesus. Matthew 18. We'll start with verse, verse 18. Truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. Listen, again I tell you, he's told him this before, again I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a symphony together about whatever anything and everything they may ask it will come to pass and be done for them by my father in heaven glory to God hear what the Spirit's saying to us today bless you Jesus bless you Jesus Todd is healed in Jesus name and when you go home he will be better glory to God he will be better. Amen. Okay, turn to James. Let's see what happens when we're not in one accord. I'm telling you, this is why, I, I, and I, as I began to study, I realized, Oh, yeah. You look around this just in the United States of America today, and you can see. The devil knows as well as God knows that a house divided among itself cannot stand. Glory to God. And I'll tell you the thing that really got me, and it was because of the thing that the pastor said in North Carolina. But then... I, and I need to be like Kidder. He didn't read stuff in Facebook that gets ugly and negative. I do sometimes, unfortunately, and it hurt my spirit. It hurt my spirit because there's a man who is a, who proclaims to be a child of God a, and loving and filled with God's spirit. They, he may, I mean, he may not believe in the baptism of the Spirit, so to speak, but when he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God came on the inside of him. That's how he got born again and resides there. And I just have to think that if he just would actually set aside some things and listen, he would, the Spirit on the inside would be scratching going, no, no, you can't be that way. You can't say things like that. You can't believe things like that. Glory to God. It, I, I, it hurt my heart. I thought this, not, this is dividing. This is something dividing this nation again. And we got the people on this side that, it's, that, that it is uh, pushed at that are showing as much hatred back. We can't do it. We can't do it. I know it's hard. I know it is hard not to, but we, we have to let our spirits have ascendancy and walk by the Spirit. I've said this and said this and said this for a lot of years that Somebody on one side or the other must begin to walk in love, must begin to walk in unity with the Father, must begin to walk in the Spirit, and it might as well be us. I mean, yes, sir. Go ahead.
what is the definition of faith? Now faith is the evidence of things not seen. We know. Yes. Bless you, Father. The very first word in that is now faith is. Amen. Pastor Bob preached a sermon nearly two years ago about that that still resonates on the inside of the Yes. I meditate on that a lot. Now faith is. If we believe that God is revealing things to the body of Christ, then by faith we have to walk like that revelation is already here. That's right. And those people already understand, just as we already understand. Yes. All of us are already walking in it. Yes. If you say it's going to come, you're not walking in faith. Yes. It is now. That's today. right. That's now right. Today, we are in unison. Right now, today, we are walking in faith. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Right now, today, the church is shining in such a way that the glory of the Lord is that's right. Prophesy it, brother. Glory to you, Jesus. James, the first chapter. Okay, so this is what happens if we don't walk in faith, uh, walk in oneness of mind, walk in faith. Glory to God. Verse 6. Only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates, doubts, is like the billowing surge out at a sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. Right. For being as he is a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, ir irresolute, he is unstable and unreliable and uh, uncertain about everything that he thinks, feels, or decides. It's strong language, but it's there. And we grow up. Every one of us grow up. <laughs> I mean, hear what the Spirit's saying to us today. Glory to God. We are, I don't, know, I don't know what word to use, we have begun, we are in the midst of one of the greatest outpourings of the Spirit that this world has ever seen before. And we stand at the very forefront, our community stands at the very forefront of all that God is doing. Glory to God. Father, bless you, Jesus. Turn to Matthew, the 12th chapter. We'll start with verse 24. But the Pharisees hearing it said, This man drives out demons only by and with the help of Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And basically what's happened is Jesus has cast a devil out of a young man. And now the um, Pharisee, they're, they have, they're always looking for a way to trip him up. Always looking for some way to, you know, we, are, we know. Uh, in verse 25, and knowing their thoughts, this is Jesus, he said to them, any kingdom that is divided against itself is being brought to desolation and laid waste. And no city or house divided against itself will last or continue to stand. And if Satan drives out Satan, he has become divided against himself and disunified. How then will his kingdom last or continue to stand? Think about it. Turn to Mark, the third chapter. This, this lesson was something that was important enough, not only of the Holy Spirit, but important enough that three of the disciples got it and wrote about it. This was something that was important enough that we need to get. Glory to God. We need to get a hold of it. 
Mark, the third chapter, the 22nd verse, or starting with the 22nd verse. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the help of the prince of demons, he is casting out demons. And he summoned them to him and said to them in parables, illustrations or comparisons, but put beside truths to explain, uh, to explain them. How can Satan drive out Satan? And if a kingdom is divided and rebelling against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided, split into factions and rebelling against itself, that house will not be able to last. And if Satan has raised an insurrection against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is surely coming to an end. Glory to God. Turn over to Luke. The 11th chapter. The 14th verse. Now Jesus... Sorry. Now Jesus was driving out a demon that was dumb, and it occurred that when the demon had gone out, the dumb man spoke, and the crowds marveled. And some of them said, He drives out demons because he is in league with, and by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. While others, to try and test and tempt him, de uh, demanded a sign of him from heaven. But he, well aware of their intent and purpose, said to them, Every kingdom split up against itself is doomed and brought to desolation. And so house, and so house falls upon house. The disunited household will collapse. <sighs> Glory to God. I see... When the Spirit said to me, the thing that the devil is the most terrified of is the thing that God is working the hardest to get done. <sighs> Glory to God. And I've been in so many churches. So many churches when the Spirit of God begins to move. And people work, the Spirit of God's moving in this place. And don't you be ignorant to think, and I'm not speaking it into existence, Lord, the blood of Jesus over this place, but don't you be ignorant to think that He's not going to try to cause a division. And I say that because I, and like I said, I am not speaking it into existence. Glory to God. Just don't be ignorant. Turn to Ephesians. Oh, Father, bless you. Thank you for what you're doing in the body. Thank you for what you're doing for us, through us. We were talking last night. Uh, Christopher comes over every Sunday, uh, Saturday, and we were sitting at the table eating dinner, and we were talking, and um, the Spirit of the Lord had, had said this to me before, but... Uh, brought it up to me again last night as we were speaking and he in God he already sees this whole thing finished as far as he's concerned every one of us are already in heaven we're already walking out whatever eternity is whatever it is that he's called us to do we're already walking that out we're already doing that he sees it finished. He sees, just like Kidder said, he sees the body as one brought up into that fullness. He sees that, he sees that finished. And I, my, my mind, because he said that to me one day, and I'm like, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> and I, you, you're going to have to mull around on it and chew on it. And you'll get it, but it's a revelation that he's bringing to the body now. I know we're not the only ones. I know we're not the only ones. Glory to God. We're going to... an author who starts with the ending and works his way forward. That's right. That's exactly right. Yes, he does. Uh, we're in a, uh, chapter 2, I'm sorry, uh, verse 13. And in our morning prayers, we have added this in that. <sighs> Glory to you, Jesus. 
hear what the Spirit's saying today, people. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were so far away through and by and in the blood of Christ have been brought near. For He is Himself our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. He has made us both Jew and Gentile, straight, gay, whoever you are, one body and has broken down, destroyed, abolished the hostile dividing wall between us. By abolishing in His own crucified flesh the enmity caused by the law with its decrees and ordinances which He annulled, that He from the two might create in Himself one new man, one new quality of humanity out of the two, so making peace. Thank you, Father. We have peace. I say to you that if there's not any other scriptures in this word that will set our community free, this is it. Glory to God. And he designed to reconcile to God both Jew and Gentile, includes everybody united in a single body by means of His cross, thereby killing the mutual enmity and bringing the feud to an end. And He came and preached the glad tidings of peace to you who were afar off, and peace to those who were near. For it is through Him that we both, whether far off or near, now have an introduction and access by one Holy Spirit to the Father, that we are able to approach Him. Glory to God. And I love this part. I know that the I'm not sure everybody says this, but in verse 14 on chapter 3, it's part of the prayer that uh, Paul prayed, and I always add this in. And when I, it's not just us, it is the body of Christ. For this reason, seeing the greatness of this plan by which we are built together in Christ, we bow our knees before the Father. Glory to you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And let's turn just right over, and you may not even have to turn, but let's look in chapter 4. I'm going to read just a, first, a little bit of the first part of it. And Paul, the Spirit, through Paul, is just is saying the same thing. Hear what the Spirit's saying to you today. Listen to what He's saying to you today. I therefore, the prisoner for the Lord, appeal to and beg you to walk and lead a life worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called with behavior that is a credit to the summons of God's service, living as becomes you with complete lowliness of mind, humility and meekness, unselfishness, gentleness, mildness, and patience, bearing with one another and making allowances because you love one another, be eager and strive earnestly to guard and keep the harmony. Keep the oneness. And oneness of and produced by the Spirit in the binding power of peace. Glory to you, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father, to walk in love. And remember the word says that love covers a multitude of sin. That's how we can say of that pastor or the pastors that were in North Carolina and wherever they are. That's how we can say, Father, forgive them. They don't know. They don't have an understanding. Open their eyes, Lord. Glory to God. Verse 11, and here it is right here. And his gifts were varied, and he himself appointed and gave men to us, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, 
Verse 12, his intention was the perfecting. And don't get tripped up on that word perfecting. We're getting ready to find. And the fully equipping or the maturing, the maturing. There's a difference between perfectness and being mature. The full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church. And in them doing that, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the truth and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness of the personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ, of the anointed one and his anointing, that the fullness of the fullness of the anointing, the fullness of the anointing would dwell in his body, dwell in us. Christ had the Spirit of God without measure. And individually, we have the gifts of the Spirit, but there is a measure that's given to us. But as the whole put together, we walk as Christ walked with the full measure of the Spirit. And He was just one. Did you hear me? He was just one, but we are millions. That's why he was able to say, you're not only going to do the things I've done, but greater things than I've done, you're going to be doing. Right. Glory to God. Oh, Father. Verse 14, So then we may lo no longer be children tossed like ships, to and fro between chance gusts of teaching and wavering with every changing wind of doctrine, the prey of the cunning and the cleverness of unscrupulous men, gamblers engaged in every shifting form of trickery and inventing errors to mislead. Rather, let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, and folded in love, and let us grow up in every way and in all things into Him who is the head, even Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Glory to you, Father. Thank you, Father, for revelation. Thank you, Father, for the wisdom and understanding, Lord. And I thank you that we are not a body that just hears, but we do. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Father. I have over the, I, I always have, but over the past few months, I found myself on the inside just yearning so, yearning so for the moving of the Spirit. Just aching almost on the inside for the moving of the Spirit. And we have the moving of the Spirit. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about every man healed, every woman healed, every child healed. I'm talking about everybody that anybody that is possessed, oppressed, whatever you want to say, by a devil, they are all set free. I'm talking about our community, not just our community, our community knowing that God loves them and having on the inside of them, like each and every one of us do, no matter what anybody comes and says to them, they're not going to be knocked off of anything because they know on the inside of them that God loves them, that they have been raised up together with Him. That's the moving of the Spirit I want. Glory to God. That's the moving of the Spirit our pastor wants. That's the, I will say this, that's the moving of the Spirit that the body wants. Glory to God. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus.
Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. You got. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. You're holy. You're holy, Lord. You're holy. You're holy, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father thank God, you. we thank you and we praise you that you have granted us out of your rich treasury to be strengthened and reinforced with your mighty power in our inner being. That Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing through our faith has settled down and made his permanent home in our hearts. And you have caused each of us individually and all of us together to be rooted deep in your love and founded securely on your love. Thank you. Father God, we have your power and we are strong to apprehend and to grasp this that with all the saints of God together in one heart, we understand the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of your love. And we come to know practically through experience for ourselves, not because somebody else told us, but because you dwell in us, we understand the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge of God. And we are filled throughout all of our being unto all of your fullness, Father God. And we are become a body wholly filled and flooded with you, Father God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For I have begun this final and this, this great move of God. And I'll use those who say yes to me. I'll use those who will take my word and will uh, do my word. Know that I choose what the world sees as base. What the world looks at and sees as considers stupid. What the world looks at and considers and says, ah, oh, no knowledge. That's the one I use, those are the ones I use. Make a decision today to walk with me, to listen to me, to be used by me. And then watch. Watch as I take and set your body out in the front. As I set your body out to sobra. As I put you out in front. And there will be many who will see. There will be many who will hear. There will be many who will come by to look. Some to gawk. Some, to see, some just to see. This is what, ah, we didn't think God could do this. We didn't think God could use these people. As far as we know, we've been told that they can't even be born again. They can't even be definitely not filled with the Spirit. Oh, brava castedo. Shay, shay de gede barodosta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. The beginnings. This is the beginnings. The beginnings. Huh. Make the decision to follow after me. Make the decision that you'll be used by me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You'll, you will be in the forefront. You will be in the leading edge. Glory to God. Thank you. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Jesus. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. You, we, we, we must walk in love. We must clothe ourselves in His love. Bless you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. And as this move goes along, as this wave moves along, there will be those who will say no. There will be those who will pull back. There will be those that will say, No, nah, this is not God. This can't, this can't be God. And you'll begin to see huge bodies. Ha, sabrafa. Big bodies that will begin to dry up because they're not going to follow along with me. Because they're not going to move along with me. Glory to you, Jesus. Oh, brava de beskede. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. So you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Father. You're worthy, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for burning on the inside of our people, Father. For burning on the inside, Father. Touching, even now, Father. Touching, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that this body is a body who will follow after you. This body is a body that says yes, Lord. We say yes. We say yeah. we're standing with you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We are walking in that that you have called us to walk in. And we are doing what you have called us to do. And we will not draw back. We are not of the kind that draw back. That's right. We step Gosh, forward Lord. and we stand strong, not in our might, but in your might. And because of our faith in you, then you stretch forth your hand. Yes. And heal. Yes. And you stretch forth your hand and you deliver. Yes. And we are those willing hands. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We watch you, we watch you move in and among us, and we take every step that you tell us to take. When you say go right, we go right. When you say go left, we go left. When you say stand still, we stop. Yes. Mm -hmm. And be still mm -hmm. and know that you are God. Mm -hmm. And you always confirm your word with signs. Yes. You Thank you. Always. Oh, yeah. Always. Oh, yes. And we stand and see the glory. Yes. Bless you, Bring Father. Bless you. To our people. Mm -hmm. deliverance to our of your spirit in this body, Father. Thank you. Ooh, glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Father. Ooh, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. 
Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over this building. We thank you, Father, it is sanctified, set aside. Father, we thank you for, the, for your presence, for your presence. Father, we thank you for the moving of your spirit. Lord, Father, that day, that as the people walk in, Father, Ah, Yes, yes, Asisi Frefedegeste. Father, we lift up the music before you today. We lift up the praise and the worship before you today. We lift up all the musicians, all the singers, Lord God, before you today. Thank you. Thank you for their for the anointing upon them. Thank you, Father, that they lead us into your very throne room. Lord, we bless you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm-hmm.